I'm Kathleen Henderson from Roots and Boots, and today we're talking about 41 ways to start homesteading without land, plus a few bonus ideas if you have access to a little bit of land or a yard. My family of five has been homesteading for years now, and before we started officially homesteading, we were working our way towards that before we even realized it. So today I wanna to talk about all the things that you can do without access to any land because homesteading really is a mentality, a state of mind. You don't have to have 20 acres like we do in order to start your homesteading journey. And maybe some people never will have any acreage at all, but they can still do so many of the things that homesteaders do. I really see homesteading as a shift from being a consumer to being a creator, to kind of shifting from the passenger seat to the driver's seat and taking charge, taking control of your life, the things you put into your body, the things you put onto your skin, the ways you educate your children, the way you fill or don't fill your schedule the things that happen in your kitchen to serve and benefit your family. And let me just say, before I get into my list of 41 ways to homestead without land, that almost all of these topics that I'm gonna mention briefly here in this video today are covered more in depth somewhere on my blog, on my Instagram, in my weekly newsletters, in my courses and eBooks that are available because my goal is to kind of download what I have learned and the experience I have gained and the skills that I've acquired and transfer those to you to save you some of the time and heartache that I've experienced along the way in acquiring all of these skills so to kind of help you fast track. So if you wanna dive more deeply into any of the topics that I'm mentioning here, because I'd like to keep this video on the brief side for you, I'm not going to dive deeply into each of these 41 and 41 plus some bonus ideas at the end for homesteading without land. So in the description of this YouTube video, you will find a link to a post on my website that will link you to the specifics for each thing that I mentioned in the video today. So if, for instance, I mention reading certain kinds of books, you will find a link in that post to the specific books that I recommend or that I have enjoyed on those topics. If you want to learn how to can, water bath canning or pressure canning, for instance, you can find more details about that on my website. You can find my course on that, but all of those details will be included in that one blog post. It's kind of like the master resource list that you can follow the links to any of the specific topics that you are most interested in. Okay, so be sure to look for that one link to that one blog post in the description of the YouTube video to dive more deeply into any of the topics that I'm gonna to mention today. So let's jump into the list of 41 ways to start homesteading without land. These involve a lot of skills that you can inquire, some research that you can do, and these are all things that you can do even in an apartment, many of them. In fact, there is a team of two girls, they're identical twins that I have followed on Instagram before called the Busy Homebodies. I'm not sure if that's still their handle, and I know that they did recently buy a house and move to a house with some, uh, with a yard. But for the longest time, it was just the two of them in a very small apartment, and you will be amazed at all of the things that they were able to do and all of the skills that they were able to learn and practice while they were still in a very small space and then it seems like they're kind of working their way up. And I just love that. I love that spirit of doing what you can with what you have, where you are, instead of sitting around lamenting the fact that you don't have land, lamenting the fact that maybe you have a husband or a spouse who isn't really on the same page with you as far as desiring some of these things or lamenting the fact that you don't know how to do this or you don't know how to do that. No one ever taught you to garden or to can or to, whatever it may be, fill in the blank. Instead of that kind of an attitude, just like I said, shifting from that passenger seat to the driver's seat 
and saying, I'm gonna start where I can. I'm gonna learn something this year. Next year, I'm gonna learn something else. And that is really how you start. If you ended up on a homestead all of a sudden, what would you even do? Would you have the skills that you need in order to get that homestead up and running and producing for your family? So start now where you are with what you have, however you can, and here are some ideas for you. And I encourage you, like I just mentioned, to identify one skill and work on that skill and then add another skill and so on and so forth. And while it might seem daunting to look at all the skills you don't yet have, I sometimes even still feel that way, It, I think you will be amazed after a certain point when you look back and see how much you have learned and how many skills you have acquired if you will just get started today, start somewhere. Okay, so let's get into my list of 41 ways to start homeschooling with Outland. The first one is to learn to cook from scratch. This is such a huge one that anyone can do. Learn to cook from scratch. Learn to bake sourdough, whether that's gluten-free sourdough, whether it's einkorn sourdough, like my family eats, whatever kind of sourdough works best for your family, get started, master that skill. Grow microgreens. Again, you can do this without any land. You can do it in an apartment and it's so rewarding. It's so easy for anyone to do, super accessible and delicious and microgreens are so nutritious to add to a number of things. Of course, salads are a big one, but you can do other things with microgreens too. Brew kombucha. You can do this in an apartment, again, it is a little bit similar to sourdough in that it's, um, you know, this living organism. It's a little bit of a science, a little bit of an art, and it's a fascinating process. My family loves to drink kombucha, so it's a tasty skill to acquire, and you can do it, again, whatever your living situation is. Shop farmer's markets. You don't have to have land to shop at the farmer's market. Meet the farmers find local produce, start learning how to cook and prepare different kinds of produce and meats. I'll talk more about that as we move down the list. Identify local farms and farmers and form a relationship with them. You can do this just from shopping at a farmer's market. You can do it by identifying the farms in your area and reaching out to them, taking advantage of any programs or opportunities they have for you to visit their farm. You know, strike up a relationship with farmers. Farmers are very busy, homesteaders are very busy, but they welcome people who are genuinely interested in what they're doing and who genuinely maybe even want to participate in some capacity. And so if you can come alongside a farmer, I'm, again, I'm gonna mention a little more around this topic as we move through the list, but if you can identify a local farm and farmer and find a way to strike up a relationship with them, that will um, benefit both of you. You can also barter farm work for farm products. So as you establish a relationship with a local farm and farmer, you can find out if they are open to bartering. You come and you work on their farm and maybe in return you receive something, whether it's eggs, veggies from the garden, meat, etc. See if they're open to bartering for those fresh local farm products. You can, whether you're shopping at a farmer's market, whether you find local farms to just purchase directly from, um, stock up on local produce, you know, explore the concept of seconds. You know, maybe they have tomatoes or apples or produce that isn't top quality for selling at the farmer's market, but they would sell you like a whole box of apples that you could turn into applesauce or something like that, or tomatoes that you could turn into some kind of sauce. So seconds or extras. Maybe they had a bumper crop of something like pumpkins or squash and they would love to send that to a good home at a lower cost and you can practice your preserving skills with those extras or those seconds. Number nine is to learn to can water bath and pressure canning. That could actually be two items on the list because those are two related but different methods of canning that require, you know, that in involve their own sets of instructions. Uh, learn to dehydrate, buy a dehydrator. You can do this in an apartment, again, buy a dehydrator and with the produce that you're getting from the farmer's market or these local farms or your seconds or your extras, you know, start to learn how to dehydrate. Dehydrating is so easy. In fact, it's probably, it's definitely easier than canning 
It's a very entry level homesteading skill. There are so many things that you can dehydrate and experiment with. Learn to ferment. This is not the easiest of the food preservation methods, but it is still pretty easy. The concept is just combining usually vegetables with salt. That's the basic concept and you know, you want to follow a recipe and kind of get the hang of it. It's pretty simple. It's just a little more of a learning curve and it can feel a little more intimidating than dehydrating in my opinion, but it's a really useful homesteading skill. You can also learn to make soap. Uh, we have dairy goats and I experimented with goat milk soap. I'm still really new at that. I have made other kinds of soap before, long ago, before we lived on our 20 acre farm. And that is definitely something you can experiment with, you know, whatever kind of soap you're interested in. If you can get your hands on goat milk soap and you want to do it that way, if you can find some beef fat, tallow, that kind of thing, or just, you know, buy a soap kit, use lye and, um, I don't even remember all the ingredients. It's been a while since I did it lye and water and it's a pretty simple process. But again, you know, you have to learn how to do it. So learn how to make soap, learn how to make candles. I love to make natural beeswax candles. They take only a very few ingredients. They are super easy to make. They are so much better for you than definitely than the scented candles that you could buy, you know, just about anywhere. And they, can even be purifying to the air, I have read. So that's really fascinating to me. So if you are on a quest to remove toxins from your home and from your lifestyle, that's a great skill to add and it's really simple to do. You can make your own candles. You can make your own cleaning supplies and body care products. You know, we mentioned making soap, but you can make so many other things. You can make your own dry shampoo. You can make your own laundry detergent, you know, figure out which of those items would make the biggest impact on your household, both in terms of toxins and in cost efficiency, you know, and start developing a repertoire of cleaning supplies, body care products that you can make yourself. Identify those systems that work for you and start, you know, integrating those into your normal way of doing things. You can also learn about herbs, learn about herbal remedies, how to use those for your family, how to source good herbs and make those remedies yourself. You can learn about essential oils and how to use them. We are big on essential oils at my house and that's something I've spent a lot of time for a lot of years really immersing myself in and learning about all the different oils and how they can be used and all the different things that we can make with them including a lot of our own holistic health care and body care products. You can, on the topic of gardening and food growing, you can join a community garden you know, you can live in an apartment and have a plot in a community garden. You can garden that way. You could identify a friend, find a friend or a family member who has a yard or a little bit of land and maybe work out a deal with them where they might let you start a garden on their property in exchange for some of the produce or I don't know, you can, you know, be creative and think of how you could make some kind of deal like that. You could also practice guerrilla gardening. Have you heard of that concept? I have a friend who guerrilla gardens and I love it. She, her neighborhood backs up to um, a power line where there is, you know, none of the homeowners own that land, but it's not really used either. And so she gardens in some of that space and there are all, this is a whole thing, a whole topic. You can look this up online. You can find lots of great ideas and lots of great inspiration, places where you can guerrilla garden. And you know, it's kind of at your own risk because you don't own the land, but I just love the concept. I love the concept of like unused city or local space that's really being wasted and then someone putting that to good use. So look it up if that interests you. You can also forage. This can get into potentially dicey territory as far as foraging on land that doesn't belong to you but definitely if you have permission it's okay and you can kind of you know push the envelope a little bit and see if you can find some places to forage for local foods that are otherwise just going to waste you can learn skills like knitting or crocheting you can learn to sew you can learn to mend so sewing is one thing that i just never Again, I said I'm going to keep this video brief, so I'm not going to go into tons of details, but 
I did make several attempts at sewing, once as a teenager and once as a young mom. And I completed several projects with lots of help from very kind people in my life. But I finally realized my during my final attempt when I was a young mom and I was trying to sew some, well I did sew some like nursery decor items, a rocking chair pad for my son's nursery and it was just agonizing for me and I, I am not afraid of learning new skills. I think if you have followed me for very long, you know that I'm very can-do and I love to tackle a challenge and master skills. But I just realized, ha have you ever realized that there's just a skill that you're probably not ever gonna be very good at? And you know, I heard a long time ago that all the things that need to be done in our lives, like we can either do them ourselves, we can delegate them to someone else, we can pay someone else to do them, like there are options, right? And I just realized that sewing was Although it's an amazing skill that I would love to have, it's so useful and can save you so much money. I just realized that for me, sewing was gonna be one of those skills that I was just gonna have to cross off my list and pay someone else to do. And I've come to terms with that. I've had a lot of people over the years say like, oh, but you can still, like you can do it. You can learn how to sew. And I just let, I just have to graciously <laughs> disagree and say, you know what? I think my time is better invested in all of these other skills over here that I feel are coming more naturally to me and offer a more positive experience to me. So anyway, that's my little personal story about sewing. But if you have a knack for sewing or it's something that you really wanna learn how to do i totally think you should and i think again you know i would be jealous of you it's an amazing skill to have i do know how to mend though and i love to recommend mending as a skill because you don't even need a sewing machine to learn how to mend you can mend by hand and as a mom of three boys we go through a lot of knee holes in our pants and i have learned the art of sashiko visible mending fabric mending and it's such a rewarding practice i just love it i love saving the knees of their pants and giving them more wear of these pants around our farm it looks fun too it's just you should check it out if you're interested and it's very easy if i can do it you know i'm not a seamstress i don't sew if i can do this visible mending you can do it i promise you can also buy raw milk and learn to make butter and you can use that raw milk to make cheese you can buy beef bones and learn to make your own beef broth. Also, if you can get your hands on beef marrow bones, I highly recommend learning to roast the marrow and eating it. It is delicious and you can find more details about that on the blog. Also, along the same lines, buy your own chicken bones. You can buy chicken backs and necks and feet. You can also, of course, buy whole chickens from local farms. And then after you've cooked the chicken and used the meat, you can use that carcass, the leftover bones and skin, to make your own chicken broth. You can learn to cook organ meats. You know, these farms and farmers that you've identified locally, you can get organ meats from them and learn to cook them, the heart, the liver, the tongue. You can grow lemons indoors. We have a lemon tree just in this room behind me. We came by it somewhat haphazardly, organically, just inherited it randomly from a friend. It wasn't something that I set out to learn, but it's been the most fun surprise for us and little adventure. I never thought I would be growing lemons in my own house, but every year we get a little lemon harvest. We get anywhere from like, I think 10 to 20 lemons and they're so delicious and we use them and sometimes I freeze the juice and you can totally grow a lemon tree inside. I am in Northern Virginia. We could not grow lemon trees outside, obviously. It gets too cold here in the winter, but we have it in a pot. The pot is pretty big. We've had it for, I wanna say three or four years now and every year, like I said, the blossoms smell so amazing when they bloom and then they turn into little lemons and then in the summertime we move the pot outside, you know, when we have good warm temperatures for the lemon tree. It goes outside and then in the winter we bring it back inside. And anyway, it's just been the most unexpected, random, fun thing for us to grow our own lemons. You can also learn, this is especially now, we're getting towards the end of the list. For those who are really seriously interested in having an actual homestead one day or an actual farm, some of the skills that you will need in that context include woodworking, building power tools. So start practicing on projects with that type of skill. Now, you could also add skills like welding. You know, you can take welding courses and welding classes. We say all the time on our farm that we wish someone in our family knew how to weld. 
Uh, we've actually purchased some welding equipment and it's just one of those things that is taking us a long time to get to. But if that's something that you can learn about before you need it, you will be so thankful on a homestead to have some welding skills. Same thing for electrical skills and plumbing skills. You know, practice, learn the skills that you can now before you get to that land or that farm. Another thing you can do is tour local farms. Again, identify those local farms and find out what opportunities they have for um, farm tours, farm visits, workshops, classes, any kind of opportunities like that. Take advantage of those. It's so helpful to see how other people are doing it and again, to strike up relationships with them and maybe even find an opportunity to help them out on their farm. You can also read gardening and farming memoirs. This is one of my favorite things to do. I did it before, you know, all along the way at every stage of our adventure before we were really full on farming. And even now that we are farming, there's just so much richness in reading other people's experiences similar to you know touring or visiting a local farm reading what a real life farmer or homesteader or gardener has written about their own journey and their own experiences is so entertaining it's so encouraging and inspiring and i have of course a list of favorites that you'll find in that blog post that i mentioned and you can also read how-to books those are different from memoirs both are valuable in different ways so you can pick up books on you know how to do this kind of gardening how to keep chickens how to keep bees etc you can watch documentaries i have a list to recommend to you there also and i'm sure there you know there are always new documentaries coming out and i can't keep up with all of them documentaries about how food is grown and how food is produced there are documentaries detailing uh, certain people, certain farms, and how they do it there. Any of the topics surrounding growing food or the food industry or how people are doing it, you know, on their own farms, those are great documentaries to watch. You can pay down debt. If you don't have a farm yet or a homestead, you know, knock out that debt. And then the next one is to start saving up for land. You'll be in a much better position to gobble up that perfect property when it comes along if you have eliminated debt and saved up some resources. And then finally, educate yourself on the best locations and features to look for in a homestead property. If you are serious about ending up on a homestead at some point, are you going to do that where you currently live in that same county, that same state, that same area? Or are you identifying another place that would be a better location for you and why and what are the features that you want in your property i actually wish that we had thought through those features a little more before we moved we had a list and our property met a lot of the things on our list um, i will tell you that one of the things that we don't have and this is the one that i sometimes wish oh i or i sometimes wonder you know should this have been a bigger priority for us should we have kept looking is water we don't really have great water access on our property we have our own well and we have plenty of water so i'm very thankful for that of course but we have no stream we have no pond those are things that we've talked about we, we seem to be on a high water table so those are things that we have talked about possibly adding at some point but that's obviously much more complicated and expensive as opposed to starting with a property that already has some water on the land. So that's just one example of features that you would want to consider, you know, and make your list of which things are important to you. And then here are a few bonus ideas. If you do have a yard or a little bit of land or you have access to a little bit of land, things that you can do to start and start small, always start small so you can have a positive experience, a successful experience, and then you can always expand later or add more things later, but start small and focus on one thing at a time. Start a garden, a small garden. You can keep bees. You can plant a fruit tree or more than one, depending on your available space. You can plant berries, again, depending on the space. You can get laying hens, even just three laying hens. You do not have to have a lot of space for chickens. And you don't need a lot of chickens to supply eggs for one household. And chickens are, you know, like a natural garbage disposal. They will turn your kitchen scraps into eggs, a protein source for your family. So I highly recommend if you have the right situation, you know, if you have a little bit of land and if you have the right permission where you live to start with laying hens, even just three chickens. And then start a compost pile. 
I'm sure you can think of so many other things that you could do, skills you could acquire, ways that you could get started if you do have a little bit of land. But these are just a few ideas to get your wheels turning and help you start embracing that mentality of moving from the passenger seat to the driver's seat, taking control of your food sources, taking control of what's being used on your skin, in your body, you know, how your family is living, how your kids are growing up. And even, I didn't even touch on the topics of homeschooling, but those are definitely topics that could be included on this list as far as educating yourself about homeschooling or even just starting to homeschool. You know, you don't have to live on land in order to educate your children yourself. So that is maybe for a separate video, but I would love to know if you have questions about any of these topics. Again, a reminder that there is one blog post linked in the description of this video below that will help you dive more deeply into many of the topics that I've touched on briefly here, but I hope that gives you ideas and encourages you and inspires you to move from the passenger seat to the driver's seat and start taking charge of your family's lifestyle.